It's time to get educated on your Second Amendment right. Welcome to two full hours of Gun Owners Radio. Your hosts, Day Stahl and Michael Schwartz, will teach you about firearms, self-defense, and the laws that affect your rights to keep and bear arms. Visit GunOwnersRadio.com with questions to learn how to become a sponsor of Gun Owners Radio and get involved. Together, we will win. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Stahl and Michael Schwartz on The Answer San Diego. All right, folks, welcome to Gun Owners Radio. FM 961 AM 1170. The Answer. Is Brendan all excited or what? He's, he's very excitable. He was. He was on the edge of his chair when I, he said that. I, don't, I try not to discourage the young, the young lad. Oh, no, I don't either. No, no <laughs> not at all. He's just coming out of his shell and whatnot. He really is. We had a a long discussion on getting his $7,500, you know, bonus to buy an electric car from the government. Oh, wow. He's so excited. He's at a very vulnerable age. He really is. I don't want (laughs) to. He's wanting to say something, but we're not going to let him. Shake your head. That's what we want. Hey, attention, California residents. Gun laws are changing across the country. The recent SCOTUS ruling affirms your right to carry a concealed firearm. So now, more than ever, it's critical you know your California gun laws. That's why the U.S. Concealed Carry Association exists, to help keep responsible Americans up to date with education and training. Visit uscca.com slash G-O-R to learn more about California gun laws and getting your concealed carry permit. That's uscca.com slash G-O-R for the most up-to-date California gun laws. Act now. How hey, you doing, bud? Good. I want to kick it off before we uh, we introduce some folks here in the studio. I want to kick it off by telling everybody I'm getting a lot of questions about SB 918, which is it's a bill um, that will uh, that's working its way through. I mean, I, I think chances are, just like in every anti gun bill in California, it'll probably be turned into law. Mm-hmm. It is. It will expand, or maybe better put, it will severely limit where you can carry, even if you have a CCW. It's, you it's, mean in your front pocket or your back pocket? No, I mean like public places, oh. like you can't carry in public <laughs> parks and whatnot. And they're trying really hard to make sure that you can't carry, uh, you know, practically anywhere. <laughs> um, and uh, it's bad news, but I got to tell you, it's look, it's bad news. So legitimately bad news. It'll very, very severely limit where you can carry. Um, you know, it it, it makes uh, having a CCW and being able to protect yourself extremely difficult okay so when you bring that up if the law says you can carry concealed yep and do businesses have the right to say no concealed carry so with with the, my understanding of the bill the way it's written right now is and that's where i'm going so i what oh, i sorry. don't want to do that's okay but i i do what i don't want to do you know these bills have a tendency to change and they're this this week and they're that that week and whatever um uh but uh, what you know, people are contacting me and they're like falling apart, like falling apart, like oh, I'm moving. This is it. <laughs> and you they know? were moving before. Like, yeah, and it's you know, I get it. It's frustrating. It's bad. But guys, just a few years ago, you couldn't get a CCW at all, and look what we did there. Yeah, yeah. We just got this new decision, the Bruin decision. Um, I really don't think that this, that most of this law, if not all this law, will stand up to, in in court. I think that we'll sue and win, and that'll be fantastic. I'm sorry that it's happening. It's it's horrible. But we all got to keep our eye on the ball. This, yeah, there's a lot. Nothing's going to happen overnight, and it's not going to be exactly what you want. Yeah, we have to fight for it. Exactly. So, I'm, you know, people are asking, like, well, geez, I'm moving. What should I do? Should I move? Should I leave? Should I even renew my CCW? Yeah, renew your CCW. No, don't move. You know, we, we haven't all heard of George Washington because, uh, you know, the, he, he got tired of the British and decided to pack up and go to Canada. You know, that's the, you know I mean, I know. we, we got it. We got to fight this thing, you know, and, and do it through all the all the, uh, you know, legal means that we have, which is getting the right people elected, which is being an activist and doing effective things. And uh, one of the ways you can be effective right now, one of the things that we're looking for, especially just a couple of months now in uh, before an election uh, we need folks to man our tabletops. We have this really uh, great tabletop program where we go to different gun shops, mostly gun shops, not not exclusively gun shops. And we uh, we tell people about the organization. We hand out voter guides. We tell people how to get their CCWs. And we need more people to help help hand out information. We sign people up to be members. We at least get them on the uh, email list so they can see all the information that we provide, all the good that we do. 
if you are tired of all these horrible laws, if you really want to do something and, uh, you know, moving's not going to stop bad laws from happening, but getting involved in the organization and, uh, you know, setting aside a, a morning on a Saturday and help us out at tabletop, that will help. So, so I guess what I'm saying is don't panic over these laws. Mm-hmm. Don't spend hours and hours and hours understanding a bill that hasn't been passed into law yet. Um, rest assured that everybody's concerned and everybody's going to work hard. You know, everybody in the industry, FPC, NRA, uh, you know, everybody is going to work really, really hard to make sure that these laws get either don't pass or, mm-hmm. or get, uh, get uh, uh, you know, um, uh, reversed in court. So mm-hmm. do your part by doing effective activism. You know, right. come join San Diego County Gun Owners <clears throat> or wherever you are, Orange County, Inland Empire, and uh, right now, specifically, we need help with these tabletops. So go to the website, sign up to help with the, with the tabletop. We'll train you. We'll show you. And you're only talking a couple hours, right? You're not talking like all day. Half a day on a Saturday, typically. Half a, half a day, three, four hours. Yeah. I think I think it's three. It's three hours. So um, and it's fun. And, you, you, and we give away T-shirts. And you get to meet. <laughs> and you get to meet Mike. Well, not always. <laughs> but you know, I mean, not, not always. Well, we have at any given time, we'll have three or four of these tabletops across the county, and then of course we have them in Orange County. Can't spread you that thin? Is that what I you're can't, saying? Yeah, I can't. I can't be in ten places at once. You've tried. I've been, I, sometimes I can be in two places at once. Yeah, but that's my maybe. So in the studio, Who you got in the house. We dude? have Alicia Curtin again back. How are you? Hey, good. Doing well. And and Alicia, you're so you're a uh, instructor from Discount Gun Mart down on Moreno, right? Correct. Cool. And you do a lot of cool things. Um, and today you're also going to do a uh, gear review for us, right? Correct. What are you going to review? Uh, just a just a type of I- a inner ear pro that um, has been a game changer for me. An inner what? Inner ear, inside the ear. What's wrong with your ear? In- inner ear protection. I got skinny ear. It's the only skinny part of me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> moving right along, and who else do we got in the house? And then we have an old friend, Perry Yi from, uh, he, he's an instructor with Fortified Measures. And he's got fat ears. <laughs> I got, now I got little ears, too. You got little ears, too? <laughs> oh, yeah. You're going to love it's this tiny. product. Yeah, boy, do we have a product. It. <laughs> and we're not going anywhere near Mike or me. <laughs> yeah, really. No. Nah. Absolutely. Uh, but Perry, he's, he's got a really interesting story. We're going to interview him next. He's a really good dude. He's been a supporter of San Diego County Gun cool. for forever. He runs his own not-for-profit, and he's also a uh, an instructor, and we're going to get real deep into his story. Yeah, yeah that's good. awesome. Yeah. Looking for, I'm really looking forward to the product review because mm-hmm. that sounds like something that, you know, if you weren't doing it, it must not be any good, right? But you're doing it, so it must be good. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's good. It's good logic. I thought you'd like that. Um, and then we're going we're gonna to talk about a couple things. We're going to talk about 87,000 armed IRS agents coming up. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, ATF. There was a whistleblower that came out. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And, of course, uh, we're going we're, we're gonna to interview Danielle Mills. She's running for uh, uh, school board up in Orange County. She was, uh, she's real active in Orange County gun owners. Cool. And uh, her husband, Steve, was actually the executive director for a while. So we're going to interview her and talk about uh, – you know, what she needs to win and what you guys can do to help her win and all kinds of cool stuff. And then, of course, we're going to have a stump my nephew. Yeah. So if you're all listening right now and you want to and your friends are all talking to you about, you know, the gun you know, rights industry and what have you, you need to let them know to tune in or listen on the podcast or listen on the website. And the reason I say it, remember a couple of weeks ago and we, we, we talked about the news that, uh, you know, the IRS had just bought 700,000 rounds of a Oh. Yeah, well, they need it for 87000 And we were all looking at each other. We're going, oh, geez, here we go. <laughs> well, this is where you'll get to cutting edge news because we do give cutting edge news. Cutting edge, I believe you're right. Yeah, 700000 <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I know. So anyway, but it's going to be a good show, and uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate everybody who's uh, out there doing the tabletops uh, yesterday. There's a few going on today. Um, again, we're winding up for the election. There's an election in early November, and we're going to have a voter guide in Orange, Inland Empire, and San Diego out um, probably, I'm going to say mid-September. Mid-September, okay. And, of course, we just didn't, we endorse people based on their Second Amendment stance, whether or not they're uh, a viable candidate. We don't care what party they belong to. <clears throat> and, of course, they're only local, so that's city council, school board, all, right. all the important boards and council. For a lot of people, getting to training means a long drive to a range on the outskirts of the county. Drive time can be a serious obstacle. What if you didn't have to leave your home and the training came to you? But first, if you have legal matters that involve firearms, and you need to call California firearms lawyer John Dillon, especially if you have questions about red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation, or maybe you need to know that your guns are California compliant. 
Call our trusted firearms attorney, John Dillon. John Dillon specializes in California gun laws. You can call him at 760-642-7150 or visit his website at dillonlawgp.com. John Dillon's the best. Yeah. Okay, so our first guest, we just introduced him, Mr. Perry Yee from Fortified Measures. How are you, man? I'm good. Thanks thank for having you, me. Thank you for coming in. Really appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you for everything you do for San Diego County Gun Owners, too. I think you've been at every single dinner. Since the beginning. Since the beginning, since yeah. even uh, before. Since before, yep. That's oh, awesome. Is that why he's Mr.? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? You never call anybody Mr. <laughs> well, listen, man. I'm hey, impressed. do you remember? I'll tell you. So here's why I call him Mr. Do you remember a few months ago I said, hey, Dave, I, I got back into boxing. Yeah. And uh, and I decided, to, you know, I went out and got some gloves. And, yeah. I, and I found a guy who used to be a SEAL, and he's in way better shape than me, and he kicks my butt. <laughs> That's Perry. That's, so that's Perry. Why. Oh, <laughs> I would call you Mr. Then he, then he, he hasn't showed up. Since <laughs> the, <last laughs> the first time you decked months. him? Yeah, that's why I call him Mr. Oh, <laughs> that way he won't invite you back. So, Perry, let's talk a little bit about your background. What uh, uh, we're, what we're going to get into is we're going to talk about Fortified Measures, which is your instruction company. Uh, but let's talk about your, your background. How did, you, how did you get into fire? Did you shoot when you were a kid? So, you know, I didn't shoot at all when I was a kid, other, other than, like, paintball. I did, I did that growing up. Yeah, but um, yeah, Don't look at him. Yeah. <laughs> look at me. He's so much better looking than I am, though. <laughs> oh but, my uh, yeah, I Truth. grew up, like, playing paintball. Yeah. And, um, I actually, I don't think I even fired my first firearm until I was 20 and just about to go into the military. So I kind of just wanted to get a little experience. Oh. And <laughs> did it you know, help? get my hand on some firearms. But um, Did the paintball help? A little bit. Did it actually? Really? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Interesting. Well, so what branch did you go into? So I enlisted in the Navy in um, January of '05. Well, why'd you do that? Why'd you pick the Navy? Um, so I, I was in college. This is uh, 2003, and you know, school was just not my thing. <laughs> I was not, not a student, and so um, I kind of you know, back then I kind of needed that. You know, you didn't have, have a college degree. What are you gonna do with life? And so yeah, the right. military was was kind of a you know just a secondary option, and at the time I had a good friend that uh, enlisted right after high school, and so I was just talking to him about his experience, and then uh, went to the local recruiter's office, talked to all the branches, and I was one like, of them hey, had was, a better claw than like, the hey, other. I want whatever the hardest thing is that you got, and not even knowing what that was at the time, I, I had no clue, and so um, L- literally asked, I, you said, I want the hardest thing you got. Yeah. So I, 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 now where'd that come from? I don't know. I think I just had a lot. To, what movie did you see? Did you see Red Dawn? Because that's <laughs> I, I did. I mean, way, be- I way before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I kind of just wanted uh, a, a big, big, big challenge, a big challenge for myself, and uh, and so from there, uh, talked to all the recruiters, and then the the Navy recruiters tell me about buds, and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. I, again, had no idea really what it was. There really wasn't a whole lot of stuff in the you know entertainment side during that time so um yeah i just piqued my interest and started training for that and then i ended up yeah shipping out in january of, uh, 05 and uh went to boot camp went to my a school and then i uh, hopped into the dive motivator program to to kind of prepare for mm-hmm. buds when, and, when uh, you go in when you in, i'm sure a lot of recruiters lead with hey you want to be a seal but i mean what per, i don't know what per, i don't know what tiny percentage of people you know, who who think they're going into the Navy to be a SEAL actually become a SEAL. I'm pretty pretty sure it's pretty small. Well, so I, I went in, and uh, he was able to get me a BUDS contract. Now, what is a BUDS so, for people that don't know? So BUDS is uh, the, the, the very start of SEAL training. Gotcha. It's, um, it's, you know, what you see on TV where you're you're running with the boats on your head and, and crawling the in the mud. And you're doing surf torture and all, you know, all the fun stuff. Right, right, right. right. Um, so I, I went in with the BUDS contract, so I, I just was guaranteed a, a slot to go to BUDS. And so I knew going in after my boot camp, after my my A school to get my rate because I needed a rate at that time before I went to Buds. Um, but I, I knew going in that that's ultimately what I was going to end up doing. You know, not knowing if I was going to make it or not, but at least I knew I was going. Right at at boot camp, are they like, hey, this guy wants to go to Buds, so he goes over here and does more push ups than anybody else? Or you know, at, at the time, in? no. Uh, mm-hmm. Now I believe there's divisions in boot camp where it's. Right. all you know candidates going to they just wanted to see if you could get through boot camp yeah and not worry about buds yeah they, they couldn't care less they could care less. i got out of shape in navy boot camp yeah i would say so 
so, so all right so you go through boot camp and then you go through what was your you said your rate right what, what was yeah your... I, I went in as an it originally and so i think it was a three-month school still in great lakes so i, I spent my first 14 months in great lakes um two winters out there which was, which was rough <laughs> yeah and so so you didn't really get into firearms training until you were a seal that's when you yeah i really didn't start um training in until third phase of buds actually so well, once you hit third phase is when you start doing your your basic weapons and you know land warfare well, and things you, like you that. didn't get any uh weapon training while you're in basic you you touch a gun once and it's like a, a little firing line you show up at the stall oh really you get your handgun you get your your shotgun and then boom, boom. You're, yeah that's it you Next. literally just walk walk down the line and that's that's the extent of maybe training of firearms so when you what was it like when you were going so you hadn't didn't really have a whole lot of firearms experience and then now they're teaching you. I don't even know how. I'm sure. I'm assuming that there's a, a basic class and then an intermediate class. But I'm pretty sure they ramp you up pretty quick, and you're like learning to, you know, pie corners and clear rooms and that sort of thing. What, you know, what's going through your head when you're when you're doing all that stuff? Um, well, at that point, you know, you're really far along in training, and so you're already in a certain mindset. And so, you know, once you start doing your marksmanship and all your close quarter stuff, I mean, it's you're 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 in it hard. And so. Um, but it's fast paced, and so you kind of just learn. But look you know, what they, the they, what was the washout rate as you were going along? I mean, it's not like well, at that point there's none really. Really? Yeah. I mean, all of the washouts happen once early you, on in buds, pre hell week. Well, that's what I'm saying. Hell yeah. Week. Okay. Because you know, if you're able to 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 make every week, if you make it, you made it. I mean, it's like wow, I made it uh, one week, and then you got the next one. And yeah, you just, honestly, you just get through the day. Yeah, you get through the day. They they kind of tell you to take it one meal at a time. Yeah, it's you know? a mindset, and some kids can't do that. Uh, unfortunately, not. Yeah, um, and you're right. I mean, it's a, I was in the <laughs> army, and I watched the you know the people that couldn't make it. I mean, just fall apart. It's just it's uh, honestly you can't you can't really describe what it's like yeah. unless you're in it. That's you, know, right. you can you can watch all the specials you want. Yeah. You can watch all the movies. Yeah. You can yeah. you can do all the training beforehand. But yeah. you know, until well, you're in we, it. I guess when you were going through the firearms training, you're doing all the stuff, and they're like, "Here, you, you know, first guy through the door does this. The second guy does this, and you know, here's how you do this close quarter stuff." Like, it, do you remember at some point going, "Man, this is cool. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this oh, for, for a living yeah. every no, day. Yeah, that's, and, that's, and that's your job. You yeah. Know? I mean, you're getting paid to do this, and it's it's an awesome experience. Yeah. And then at, and so then you they, they send you to a SEAL team, and, and you actually – they deployed you, and you were in uh, – I don't know if you want to – I don't know how much you want to talk about. If there's something you don't want to talk about, tell me you don't no, want to talk fine. about. But then you yeah, go to – Yeah, I mean, I, I went to SEAL Team 7 after I graduated, and um, I was over in Afghanistan, and obviously, like, the the – Close quarter stuff is a lot different in that environment than it is than the previous wars that they were fighting in, in yeah. Iraq. But um, um, I just actually started getting more into shooting after I got out of the service. Yeah. So talk about uh, that because you had a real interesting. Uh, you know, you were with with Warfighter Academy, right? With, correct. With, yeah. with Dave, yep. and you met Dave. Dave was a SEAL, and I, I remember you telling me, and I'm paraphrasing, but I remember you saying, "Yeah, man, I, you know, I was a SEAL. I got taught all this stuff. I thought I really knew what I was doing." And then, you know, I meet Dave. Dave's got this whole different philosophy and curriculum, and it was, like, next level. Was that – is that – I paraphrase that yeah, okay? Yeah, no, that's great. So this was twenty late 2014. Um, so I was – actually, I was working at Poway Weapons and Gear at yep. the time. I was yep. a, just a, a range safety officer over there. Yep, that's and where then, we met. That's where we met. Yeah, that's yep. where this whole, you know, Insanity started. Insanity started. <laughs> <laughs> I remember looking at this dude going, he was a SEAL. I'm like, hey man, what did you do for? Hey a man, was you want to the, punch me yeah, in the yeah. face? I'm ready. <laughs> was it the tattoos that gave it away? I, it, yeah, I, right, you know. right, right, right. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, late 2014, I started uh, training at the Warfighter Academy in Escondido, and I, uh, like you said, you know, I ran into to Dave Maynard there, who was the master instructor, and we were the the school was teaching CQB to military, law enforcement, civilians, mm -hmm. and um, it was all force on force training. And I can't stress enough the importance. Doing force on force training. Okay, what's what's force, so on force on force? Force training meaning you are um, you're you're learning these tactics with the element of getting shot at by something. You mm -hmm. know whether it's paintball, sim munitions, airsoft, whatever it is. But you're actually you know training against you know, an opponent that is actually firing back at you. Um, and it's just, it's yeah with with Dave's philosophy, it, uh, it kind of just blew my mind because we rarely ever did any force on force stuff with my time in the teams. Um, the only times we would is when we were doing like a big final training exercise and we had, you know, we spent months in the, in the shoot house 
you know, doing all the drills, learning all our tactics and movements, but you know, the, the final element and we, we, we have some role players in there and stuff like that. So we hardly ever did it. And so once I started training with Dave, we were training I me. Mean, I trained for a few years, three times, four times a day, three to four hours a day, we Whoa. were getting after it. And so just the thought of like, all right, we were, we're, we're legit learning how to gunfight. You know, it's hard to learn how to gunfight when you're not actually in a gunfight, when you're mm -hmm. just shooting at paper targets that aren't shooting back. You right. know, there's a whole other, you have one little projectile coming at you and it just changes everything, yeah. the whole dynamics Ooh. of what you're doing, right? <laughs> your, your movements change, um, your adrenaline changes. So uh, we were doing that consistently, you know, multiple times a week for, for years. What's the, what's the old saying? Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Right. Was that Tyson? Yeah, I think it was Tyson. I think it was. <laughs> So yeah, from there, uh, I just happened to not drop everything that I had learned from the teams, but it just you know opened up my toolbox and just took in all this new information. You added some new tools. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, from there, you know, I just kind of dedicated my time and energy into learning as and absorbing as much as I could from him, and uh, you know, eventually being one of his instructors at the school, mm -hmm. and um, you know, going off and actually still teaching his material that I've learned from him in, in the business I do now. And I, I got to tell you, I was really impressed um, with <laughs> you not only know what you're doing when it comes to, you know, with, with gunfighting. I, I, I thought you were well above average when it comes to being an instructor. You were head and shoulders above, uh, you know, uh, the other folks there. Just at the at the art of instruction, just, you know, getting a, a message across. Your outstanding job. Um, what, what If you had to kind of summarize, like, what was the big thing – you know what was the big difference? What was the, you know, what was better about? Because I know Dave. You want to you want to hold him for the next segment? Because well, well, we're gonna so I'm gonna ask, he's gonna I'm gonna let him. Yeah, he's gonna be let like, him think I'm about the question. question. All right. Well, cool. what was it when you're like you know what was the big difference between what you learned with Dave and what you already knew from the from the SEAL teams? When you're looking, wait a minute. When you're looking for jewelry yeah. or fine watches, where do you go? Well, go to San Diego's top jeweler, Leo Hamill. Conveniently located in the heart of San Diego, you can visit Leo's showroom on San Diego Avenue. I think he's down in Old Town, if I'm not mistaken. He is. Just to see their hand-picked lines of new jewelry, watches, and vintage jewelry. And when you buy from Leo Hamill, not only do you get the best deal, you are also supporting the Second Amendment. Support the company that supports the 2A. Visit them online at leohamels.com, or you can visit one of his showrooms and always get awesome service at Leo's. For gifts that last a lifetime. For you or your loved one, visit Leo at LeoHamels.com. Don't even think of buying a, a Rolex anywhere but but Leo's. Did you get me one? I got you two. You're the man. I couldn't decide. I know. So. You know, it was my birthday last week. Happy birthday. Thank you. Where's my Where's my Rolex? I, I left it. It's I on need my, the Daytona. It's on my hope chest of my... Oh, so, oh, so <laughs> me and your hope chest can hope together <laughs> exactly. and see what it shows up? I'll okay. bring it right over. All right. Uh, so we're talking to Perry Yee. He was just about to tell us. Oh, he uh, got all his, most of his firearms training in the in the Navy when he was a, a SEAL, and then he met uh, uh, Dave Maynard at uh, Warfighter Academy. And we were just about to talk about what was the what was the big difference. How would you describe the 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 enormous uh, leap in training between what you learned as a SEAL and, and Dave Maynard? Yeah, biggest thing was just practicality. My my very first day. Uh, I went into the academy. Uh, it was there was just the instructor staff there, so we literally just jumped into training that that first night, and um, immediately they start having you shoot left and right handed. Right, you're shouldering your weapon right shoulder, left shoulder. I mean, I'd never done that before unless we were doing some you know minimal like oh we're gonna simulate you got shot in this arm, so you got to do some you know offhand shooting at a target. Um, but that's the the ground basis to that, and so. Uh, the purpose behind that is, is so when you're coming into corners, you know, if you, there are left-handed corners, there are right-handed corners. And I was always going into left-handed corners mm -hmm. in my right shoulder. And so it just, mm -hmm. just the practicality of your body position. And now it also changes how you're going to maneuver within two rooms. Um, but we, we learn everything on a, an individual level. So we actually start doing one person CQB, which, you know, I was never taught in the military. I'm not sure if, if they do that now. Okay, what's CUB? So CQB is close quarters battle. Uh, okay. We called it CQC okay. in the Navy, which is close quarters. By the combat. way, I'm the dummy in the room, so I will <laughs> ask you to explain yeah, things. Yeah, so any, any type of, like, you know, room clearing situation Great. like that. Gotcha. Um, so we all, we, you, you learn on an individual basis first before you even start working into two, three, four man teams and so gotcha. on. Gotcha. Uh, because once you can learn, you know, the proper 
maneuvers and, and movements that you're responsible for, now you start throwing in more people and everyone kind of knows what their job's going to be without having to really, um, you don't know, have, have a, a specific role. You know, you, you gotcha. can be more fluid when you're actually doing stuff like that. Okay. And so you you, uh, you worked with them, learned a ton from Dave. You still train with Dave, right? Yeah, I still you see still... Dave every, every now and then. He's such a good dude. I like him. He cracks me up. He's such an interesting guy. Um, I haven't seen him in a long time. I've, I've only uh, talked to him a few times. But endlessly interesting guy. Um, and then you also, uh, we're going to talk about your, your new business training, but, but you also run um, a not-for-profit. Correct. Yep. And what's the name of the not-for-profit? So that's called Active Valor. Not Act of Valor like that. Really like the movie? awesome seal movie. Yeah, <laughs> I like but, it. But uh, active valor and uh, yeah, that's been my baby for the last six years. And talk um, about what do you guys do? So what we do is we have a, a mentorship program here in San Diego where we pair transitioning veterans as ongoing mentors to a children that have had that has lost a parent either overseas in combat wow. or to suicide while serving on active duty. And so with uh, here within San Diego, we host a series of very elaborate and themed outdoor adventures, which give the veterans an opportunity to pass down their military experience and knowledge to these kids that don't have it in the home anymore with their, you know, their military wow. parents That's deceased. Cool. And now you're relaunching a, what you're doing is you're launching your own uh, training uh, company called Fortified Measures. Now, tell us about Fortified Measures. What are you What are you What are you looking to accomplish? And so, what we do with the Fortified Measures is it's a, a mobile training unit. So, what I do is I actually travel to people's homes and teach them how to protect themselves and their families with a firearm. It's all firearms based, and teach them how to clear their home in you know in a uh, hopefully unlikely scenario that they have any type of home invasion. Um, but unfortunately, with the tempo of what's happening and, and mm -hmm. crime and just the violence that's happening, um, it's just a, a, a skill that I think everyone should have at least a, some basic knowledge on. You know, it's one thing, especially for firearms enthusiasts that go to all these courses and all these ranges and take these classes. It's, again, great to open up that toolbox and get as much knowledge as you can. But when it comes down to it, you know, people want to know and feel comfortable and safe on how to protect themselves within their own domain you know it's we're, we're in their that home is so until it's so, so not only that but alicia you could jump in anytime but wouldn't you think if he came to your house and trained you in your house your confidence level would skyrocket because now you know you already know your house right absolutely but now you know how to protect yourself in your house well you know if you don't mind i'd like to actually speak to that i've taken many cqb courses cqc i both terms as well um and you take that knowledge and i've gone home to my house and i realized you know what first of all i want to rearrange my furniture <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know sometimes you realize there are things that are better placed in a, in a different arrangement but you take that knowledge and you go back home and there are some things that you can do with that knowledge but having someone that's an expert that could really come in there with a with an expert eye does make a real difference but taking that knowledge from a training that's outside of your home in a different environment you can make some applications but it's not going to be it's not going to be as fine-tuned as some as bringing in someone with the I expertise know. that he has. Do you make people yep. move their furniture around? Nope. We, we leave it as it is because that's the way it's going to be, right? And so uh, uh, I come in with, I mean, literally the, the consumer needs nothing. Um, but it, it's good. At, other than the ability to learn. Correct. And so I, I bring all the training tools. No dumb know, questions. There's, there's no, no dumb questions. Nope. I mean, everything is accepted and opened. And we want them, again, you, I want to be able to leave knowing that they are completely 100% confident in you know, do you do their the skills. whole family, or do you just? It depends on what they want. Um, it can be a single person. I've actually done a couple and their ten-year-old daughter as well. Um, so it just really depends on what the family wants. And um, yeah, again, I, I come in with all the training tools. There's obviously no lethal well, of course, ammunition right, yeah. or anything. Right, so right, you get right, right. you get the comfort of being in your own home, but you also don't have the stress of being out of range, you know, especially if it's an, if it's a first time or a new shooter, yeah, nobody's um, watching you. Right. Exactly. Especially so, if you're going to make a mistake. Yep. Yeah. But well, you know, mistakes are welcome. Well, and it's, <laughs> it's, you know, it's important to emphasize that this isn't marksmanship and it's not even, you don't really even talk about like the function of firearms. I mean, you, they could be practicing with a loaf of bread. This is, <laughs> this is where to go and what to do when the, you know, stuff hits the fan. Yeah. And it kind of depends on what the service is. I mean, if it is a brand new shooter that just wants me to come and teach them the, you know, basic functionality of the right, weapons, right. I do that as well. But for those who want to do the home defense stuff, uh, I, I require to have some sort of background and knowledge on their firearms. We don't, you know, we don't go over 
the the fundamentals of right, their firearm. Right, right. It's all about you know the movements, right. the uh, being being able to. Mm. We run scenarios on the hey, well, I mean, what happens if you know, you're in bed? You hear the cry, right. you know, the, the crash happened. He can tell you that or, story. Or, I have. Uh, and by yeah, the way, you can't, actually, by yeah. the way, you can't use bread. Have you seen a price of a loaf of bread? Yeah, well, it's yeah. cheaper to buy a weapon. It's well, you know. So you remember a couple of years ago after La Mesa burned down, and uh, and then and then they were you know next stop was Santee, mm-hmm. which is where I, I mean, that's where my house was, that's yeah. where I was living. Um, I had a neighbor who bought a shotgun and called me up, and it was like the night before we were supposed to have a riot in Santee, <laughs> and he called me up and he said, "Hey, can I come over?" Good dude, great guy, but just new with firearms. And he said, "Hey, can I come over and could you teach me how to how to uh, um, you know how to work my shotgun real quick?" And I'm like, "Man, the, the day before a riot is let's just not- wait. Let's just wait a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, let's not. That's not the time. Which is look, I'm not not making fun of this guy at all. He's he's a great dude, but um, everybody out there listening, you know, there are a lot of different kinds of training, and most people." You know, when you t- tell people, hey, go take training, they go take some kind of marksmanship training. Right. They go try to figure out how to better put, you know, a hole in a piece of paper. And that's important. But there's so much more out there. Because you can't get the bag. Excuse me, sir. Could you just move yeah. a little bit more to the left? Okay. Right. Can't do that. So uh, the, what I really, really like, and Perry was generous enough to, uh, we actually auctioned Perry off at our gun prom this year. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't remember the names of the, of the winners, but they're going to come and, and, and learn from you. Um, but it's such. Have they come training. and learned yet? No, yeah, we're going to start. Uh, I believe first week of September. Because we awesome. need to, you know, what we need to do. We need to get those folks if they'll come that in, sure, and talk about the experience yeah. of what it was like. I didn't hear that uh, raffle. Uh, it was a uh, live auction. I didn't hear that. I must yeah. have been sleeping. Well, that's you probably were. Yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> but it's uh, totally unique training. It's, it's extremely uh, relevant and and pragmatic. How long does it take? So there's a, uh, it depends on what you want. There's a, I offer a five day and a 10 day course. So this isn't a one time I show up and that's oh. it. You know, uh, it's something that you need to practice at. Obviously, so you just know people are... have terrible memories. <laughs> well, I mean, on, honestly, they're very perishable skills. And so you yeah. can't learn everything within one day. So this way you break it up into five or 10 days and they're about, they're two hours per session. Oh. And so, but you know, and that probably goes by like it goes a by really fast, yeah. uh, especially once they do start asking more questions. But what's great about the, the training tools and you know, we're working with laser systems, CO2 powered barrels that have recoil. So right. you can actually have so a little bit of realism, it. but you have all these interactive targets that you can place throughout your entire house. You can put them in corners, you can put them up on banisters. I mean, so you can really explore. I mean, you, the, whatever size their home is, that's all the training space that you have. I mean, you can use every inch of it. Have you ever showed up on the second training and the guy or the girls dressed like Rambo? <laughs> Not yet. They got Not all yet. the they got yeah. the paint on the face, they're ready. But it, you know, it is funny enough. I mean, it, it is it's educational, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Well, I was gonna say Yeah. Yeah. I bet after you're done training them, I bet, you know, every weekend the, the family says, All right, we're gonna have a trainer tonight. Let's everybody get in your outfits. I, I had this this lady, uh, real sweetheart, uh, older lady who was involved in politics years ago. Uh, she wanted to learn how to get a or how to she was, she was going to buy a gun. She wanted to learn how to shoot a gun. So she showed up uh, at a at a at a range, met her at a range, and you know, very professional lady, always in a nice suit or whatever. You know, very you know. She showed up. She had camouflage pants and a black turtleneck sweater. She on. was ready. I'm like, we're not going to a Black Panther rally. We're you know like <laughs> we're just learning how to shoot a gun. Whatever. Let's go in there. This will this will work out great. Anyway, so that's enthusiasm. Uh, <laughs> she was definitely that, and that's what you don't you want enthusiasm? You do. Actually, we had a client when I was working at Warfighter, um, this young lady that just moved to California, and she would come train in heels and a skirt, and she was like, "Hey, this is one I'm in all day, every day. I, I, I would rather train in a more, you know." practical scenario because you can't like, tell yeah. the, the the guy breaking in hold on let me go change clothes <laughs> hers was more out for you know everyday environment but uh wow. yeah i mean it's yeah this, guy, awesome. this guy's good we gotta, i know yeah, yeah i've been i've seriously i've been waiting to get him on here and i think we're gonna have him on here a few more times uh website yeah you can go ahead and uh, find me at fortifiedmeasures.com where you can check out all the different programs you can uh, uh there's no you, you can't actually purchase packages because it's only available for San Diego County residents. But you can go ahead and shoot me an email, which will be uh, on the contact form. And, yeah, that's the best You part. get that? Shoot him a... I get it. You get that? Uh, and we're going to... I've decided in, in a couple of segments here, we have an open segment. I'm going to get Perry to tell the scariest SEAL story. Ooh. Scariest story ever uh, that he ever uh, experienced when he was a SEAL. I'm going to have a fun one.
Helping more pro-Second Amendment local officials get elected is what we do. Danielle Mills is running for Orange County School Board. We're talking to her next. But first, do you ever wish cleaning your gun was easy? Well, clean, lube, and protect your gun with CL1. CL1 CLP Plus is natural, non-toxic, and environmentally friendly. Clean your gun easier and faster, and you'll always smell better, too. One and done with CL1. Ask for it by name at your local gun shop or get some on their website at seal1.com. That's seal, the number one, dot com. Our next guest, we have her for uh, I don't, Orange County School Board. I want to double check and make sure that's exactly what she's running for. But well, she's let's up ask in her. County. We're going to ask her. I think we should. She's up in Orange County. She's very active with Orange County Gun Owners Pack. Uh, she's a wonderful individual, and I'm so happy to, to see that she's uh, jumping in the arena and running for office. I think that Orange County is going to be better for it. Danielle Mills, how are you? you How's i'm doing well how are you guys fantastic now what exactly what office exactly are you running for i'm running for newport mesa unified school district trustee area number two okay what a business card that that's what i thought <laughs> <laughs> that's what i thought it was <laughs> anyway um yeah. that's awesome so uh ta- what, what, now what made you uh what made you jump into the race what made you what was the what was the decider that made you go, you know what, that's it, I'm running for school board? The last two and a half years have just been a fight with our school board and going to school board meetings and trying to advocate for my kids, other kids, um, with schools being closed, masking, um, some of the things, the trainings and curriculum that they're pushing um, were just just got fed up and decided if if I'm going to make a real change and stand up, then I should run for office. Another angry mama bear. There you go. Mama bears are, are out in full force all around. That's awesome. So what, it would tell us, give us a little bit of a lay of the land. Is there, are you running against an incumbent or uh, is it an open seat or how does it look? Not uh, no incumbent. The incumbent uh, is is not going to seek reelection. I have one uh, one other person that is running, and she is supported by the teachers' unions and Planned Parenthood. And I am not going to be supported by any of those uh, big money uh, unions and groups. I want to represent parents, and I don't want to be. Uh, accountable to anyone but the parents and the kids in our district wow and you are a parent you have two two little babies right i have well yes they were once little babies a long time ago (laughs) i have two sons one is going to be a junior and one is going to sixth grade next week is the first week of school so last week of summer they're still babies to you come on (laughs) they always will be that's right but now my my Youngest baby towers over me at like six foot one, so Whoa. it's really hard to remember. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're you've been very active with Orange County Gun Owners, which I'm extremely appreciative of. Um, I, I'm a big fan Absolutely. of Orange County Gun Owners. It's a great organization. It's full of great people. Why was it important for you to get involved with Orange County Gun Owners? Being a California resident and owning a gun, guns. Um, Wanting to have a CCW uh, has always been a challenge. And so we, my husband, Steve, and I joined Orange County Gun Owners because we wanted to help promote gun ownership and how, and safety and fun. And um, um, the more people that realize that, that gun ownership is a, an essential right in our state and our country the more people that we can bring into the fold the better the stronger the second amendment community will be so we've we've enjoyed um the social shoots and hanging out with like-minded people and um getting to know some really fabulous fabulous people who are involved as well so well and and you're you're, we love it you're a great example of what we're trying to accomplish with these different organizations you are a uh reasonable level-headed person who lives in the community who has kids and pays taxes and and is really what you're doing is you're standing up to extremism you know there's there's so many extremist positions that have gone on 
on school boards, city councils, you name it, and you're finally saying, hey, you know what, this is way too much. I want to stand back up or stand up to these people and and bring back, a, you know, a reasonable, you know, common sense kind of uh, environment in the school board. And I really appreciate that. Well, thank you. And yes, the schools and school boards, administer, everyone needs to just get back to the basics. We need to teach core curriculum and leave the crazy woke stuff out. And, you know, our kids are not the better for it. So test scores are going down. Um, absenteeism from school, you know, kids are ditching school more often. It's just not as important. There's there's a lot of stuff that's happening, a lot of acting out. And, and some of it's not their fault. I mean, we were shut down for so long um, and then made to be fearful uh, of, of living life. And so it's no wonder, but, but we need to get back to normal. We need to get back to the core things and, and get our, uh, get our kids education back to what it, what it should be. And running for office is intimidating. And I think people think it's extremely complicated um, it, you know, this is your first run, right? You're not, you've never yeah. run for office before. Um, never run for office before. so, uh, what would you tell people, people that are, that, you know, haven't run before and they, they're afraid to, because it's, you know, it's difficult and complicated and, and, you know, they're afraid that they're going to be judged and, you know, whatever, what would you, what would you tell those folks? I would tell them to surround themselves with people that support them. And there are there are a lot of people out there who want to help you. And my husband keeps telling me, you need to let people help you. You need to let people help you. And I'm trying to do that, but I'm usually the type of person who likes to take things on, you know, on my own. So letting people help you, there are people out there who want to and to let them use their expertise and uh, take some of their direction. And, but at the same time, be you, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to change my stance on something because someone says, oh, that's, you know, that you, you shouldn't really say, no, I'm going to say that I have always been against masks. I'll never vote to mask. I'm going to say that I won't vote to mask our kids ever. And if someone doesn't like it, then they can vote for the other side, but you have to stand for you and what you believe in and accept help and, and get it done. We need, we need more people out there to stand up and just normal people. Right. Who are hey, not which is exactly who, who you are. are. Not- Alicia, you got a question? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you did or not. Since you know, just I don't have there. a question. I just had a, a comment just from one to another, Daniel. I just want to thank you for what you're doing. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. I, I, I have, I have been encouraged by so many people and I appreciated, you know, all the encouragement and, and, it can be an intimidating process, but I'm just going to go through it as best I can. And I don't remember which famous founding father said it, but, you know, the duty is ours and results are God's. So mm. I'm, I'm like just that. going to do what I, what I need, think needs to be done. And if it is meant to be, then I will trust God to have those results in my favor. Wow. What, are you, what are you looking forward to most about, you know, when you get on the board, what do you look at? You know, there's a lot. It's it's a it's a thankless job in a lot of ways. And, there, you know, half the people are always going to be, you know, n- not quite happy with you. You know, you should have done this, should have sure. done that, whatever. But what are you looking forward to most when you when you get on the school board? You know, what, what do you think is going to be most fulfilling for you? Definitely standing up for parental rights. As a parent, the last two and a half years, we've been kicked off of school campuses we haven't been allowed to walk our kids to class, especially in elementary school. Um, you know, there have, we, we've, we've been kicked out of the classrooms, out of the libraries, and there are so many things happening on school campuses that, that parents need to be made aware of. And now is not the time to just, you know, go uh, about your daily business and think that your, your kids are safe at school because they're not. I, for the most part, you know, I, I like where my kids go to school. I love our schools here. I, I'm happy my kids are in the schools that they are in. But could they be better? Could they be more more safe? Could there be more um, oversight? Absolutely, by parents. And I want to advocate for those parents who want to do that for their kids. What do your What do your kids think of you jumping into politics? <laughs> um, oh, ma! Right, pretty much. Um, 
they're you know the teenager is like oh so embarrassing um <laughs> i don't think my younger one has a has a care about it at the moment right. but, but the uh, oldest one i knew he would on. yeah Huh? I said I knew the oldest one would. He goes, "Oh my god, oh, mom!" Yeah. But it's not like he didn't no, know. No, it's not like he didn't know where you were coming from. Hey, how do people help you out? How do people support you? What's the best way to get to you? Um, I have a website coming. I don't yet, which kind of sucks, but I don't. Um, <laughs> and I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Danielle Mills for Newport Mesa on Facebook, and Mills for Newport Mesa on Instagram, and there will be links there for a website for donations uh, very shortly. All right. And check out orangecountygunowners.com. Yeah. She's, she's an active member. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, she's a. Uh, and a mentor for Not Me OC. She's a mentor for Not Me. All right. Yeah. She, she shows up at the shooting socials. She makes yeah. things happen, folks. She's legit. She's the real deal. She's uh, uh, probably my very favorite person with the last name of Mills. I can't wait till she becomes governor. <laughs> Won't that be cool when she becomes oh, governor? That'll be great. And then we can talk to her again. Steve, you're a close second, but Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, kiddo, thank you very much. It was great talking to you. Thanks, guys. Well, you know, an ATF whistleblower exposes rampant fraud. We're going to talk about that next. But first, a lot of companies are so frustrated with their websites. They look old. It's out of date. It's not getting any customers. Well, Sage Tree gets it. Since 2005, Sage Tree has been helping companies with websites that look great, work great, and get leads. So stop being frustrated by your website and get one that you're proud to share. Contact Sage Tree today to get a website that makes the phone ring. And getting started is so easy. Call 866-728-9100. That's 866-728-9100. And let's get your website fixed today. So I'm not a big fan of the ATF. I've not been... Uh, you know, I haven't hid that. I've uh, been pretty vocal about it. Right before, it was a couple of years ago, it was right before COVID, I was invited to a meeting that uh, ATF hosted, and uh, a bunch of uh, FFLs were invited. The you know gun dealers were invited, so I got I got invited to just kind of be a fly on the wall. And the it started out by saying, "Hey, we want to stop a bunch of drug cartels from getting guns." you know, and, and causing a lot of illegal activity. And okay, great. Everybody wants to do that. We don't want a bunch of criminals, mm -hmm. you know, getting firearms and using them to, to cause crime. That's horrible. Um, and then the rest of the meeting was all about how the ATF is using, there's a federal law that basically says if you're breaking a local or a state law, that you're also breaking a federal law. It's kind of this, you know, two and for were, one. Yeah. And then we're going to use that. So, cause if they break a state gun law, if they break a California gun law, the ATF, shouldn't care you know it's not it's not a federal law they're a federal agency but they said oh nope there's this law that says hey if you break a federal if you break a state law then you're also breaking a federal law so that's what we're going to use to go after especially they talked all about the pistol roster and the pistol roster is the safe gun handgun or the safe handgun roster is uh it's a list of uh of pistols that dealers can sell in california and the only way to get on the list is to go through a drop test and a lab, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to have a micro stamp. That's technology that doesn't exist. So it's in fact, a, uh, basically a pistol ban. I mean, very few pistols you can buy in California because of this. Well, what does that have to do with drug cartels getting illegal, act, or, uh, getting illegal guns? Nothing. It has to do with, uh, you know, going after somebody who, you know, bought a gun in Arizona and now they're in California because they couldn't get a gen five Glock and you know, they can get it in Arizona. They can't get it. In, it's got nothing to do with a drug cartel. It has everything to do with just being anti-gun. It was the most intimidating meeting I've ever been to, and I'm, I'm not really easily intimidated. And the ATF meeting where they were, I mean, they are viciously going after um, Californians for these stupid you know, gun laws that don't exist in any other state, um, rather than doing what they say they want to do, which is go after drug cartels. I've long said that the ATF is a predatory agency, full stop. So Ammo Land... Um, published a uh, did a did a, an article uh, the author of the article is a guy named John Crump and amaland.com is a fantastic uh, um, uh, website that does second amendment uh, articles they published an article on an ATF agent that quit and wrote a letter kind of a whistleblower-esque letter a leaked resignation letter provided to amaland news shows the ATF agency in turmoil over political pressure Brandon M. Garcia, 
was a career Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, Explosives, or ATF special agent until he resigned over the, over the politicalization of the federal agency and the government's attempt to divide people. Garcia sent a lengthy six-page resignation letter laying out his reasons for leaving the Bureau after 18 years of service. He explains that he didn't do the job for the money or for fun. He wanted to put violent criminals behind bars, but lately he doesn't feel like he knew what the mission was anymore. He was asked to do things that didn't make any sense, and when he asked why, he was always told because they said so. And this is what he's describing. What he's beginning to describe is exactly what I was talking about when I'm sitting in this ATF meeting going, hey, great, yeah, let's all join hands and, and help to fight crime. And then, the, you know, three quarters of the meeting was, here's how we're going after you and the people you love for, you know, trying to get a Gen 5 Glock because you, know, you can't get a Gen 3 Glock. I mean, it's ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. Here's a quote from the letter, quote, I don't know what the mission really is anymore, but I don't like it. For the past couple of years, I've found myself asking why a lot more often. As of late, the answer is typically because they said so. I still don't know who they are, but I seem to disagree with whoever they are pretty much on everything Garcia wrote in his resignation, in his resignation letter. The former, the former special agent highlights how crimes across the country are prosecuted differently depending on if the state is a red state or a blue state. He explained that agents are expected to set aside their personal and political beliefs, but says that the same standard doesn't apply to the entire Department of Justice. He claims other ATF employees are struggling with the same realization. Uh, he claims that the woke left is running the country. He specifically targets the DOJ Civil Rights Division. He insinuates the low morale at the ATF and other law enforcement in, in, in other law enforcement in general is because of the anti-law enforcement movement that he feels is being pushed by the administration and Joe Biden's Attorney General, Merrick Garland. He says the DOJ was using COVID as a, quote, scapegoat. He points out that the last time the morale was as low as it is now is under the Obama administration, which he says is also hostile to law enforcement. He also points out that each administration celebrates diversity unless it is diversity of thought. Um, you know, and I, I don't think it's very, it's not a very popular opinion. I think people go, oh, hey, wait, 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 Mike, you don't want to, you know, calling the ATF predatory. Gee, golly, that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But frankly, it is. Uh, they really, really are, especially in Southern California. I think he's absolutely right. I think that the federal agencies act differently in different states. I don't think they're the same in Arizona. I don't think they're the same in, in, uh, in Nevada as they are in California because they really, truly are aggressively going after you know, what I would say are, are, you know, normal people, people that are not career criminals. In other words, if they're breaking a gun law, they're doing it unintentionally or they're doing it not as a result of uh, or not a, for the purpose of committing crimes, but they're doing it because they didn't know. You know, they didn't know. Oh, I didn't know I couldn't do that. I didn't know that, you know, I don't understand why this Gen 5 Glock is so much different than this Gen 3 Glock. I thought I was following the law by getting a buddy of mine or whatever. <clears throat> in another state to buy, you know, that, that sort of thing. I don't know, Alicia, do you, how much do you see, how much confusion do you see, you know, for, for people that, that come through your classes, especially new shooters and they don't understand when it comes to magazines, guns, et cetera. Oh, it's constant. It's con They don't understand the roster. They don't understand the reason for it. They don't, you know, they just, you know, like you were stating, you look at a gen three Glock versus a gen five, as far as function goes, there's minimal difference. It comes down more to grip and to texture. And, you know, do you have finger grooves? Do you not, you know, how does that, play into the safety of the firearm and it, it just a lot of those laws and rules don't make any sense and so people are confused they don't understand it and you guys you guys are both professional firearms instructors and i know perry you and i have had you know multiple conversations where you know you call me up send me a message say hey man uh you know i'm trying to do this or can i do that or how do i do this or that's a, it should you shouldn't have to be a paralegal to to defend yourself no it's just hard keeping up like i, I mean just like you were talking about i have clients and students that they come to me with the questions and or they see a firearm they want to get. And I'm like, oh, you can't have that. And they're like, oh, what about this one? Well, I can't have that either. And so uh, it is I think it's just extremely hard just to keep up with. And, you know, at that point, it's like how how, how much is it regulated with local law enforcement? You know, how, how often do they keep up with all the different laws that are happening? He goes on to write, Agent uh, Garcia goes on to write, did our leaders forget that ATF agents are law enforcement? Most agents are pro-gun. All agents should be anti-criminal. We did not become ATF agents so we could collect data, ensure firearms are in compliance, seize trigger groups, argue about what a firearm is or is not, seize firearms for reasons other than prosecuting criminals, 
or spend countless hours inputting data to justify someone else's existence in headquarters. We became ATF agents so we could work the streets and smack evil in the mouth. We took this job because we were willing to risk it all and hope that we can make the streets just a little bit safer for the law-abiding, upstanding citizens of the USA. At least that's why I became an ATF agent, Garcia wrote. I got to tell you, we need more ATF agents like that. We need the ATF in general to get back to that attitude because, again, I will say one more time, and it's currently in Southern California, they are a predatory agency not to be respected, to be heavily audited, and to be completely overhauled. Well, we got 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 people to audit them. We just hired 87,000. Not that kind of audit. Well, we could spare a few. That's okay. Hey, did you know we have a world-class flight training school here in San Diego? Yeah, pilots can fly almost every day. We're close to the ocean, the desert, the mountains, and the border. And that's why San Diego is one of the best places to learn how to fly in the world. You can learn to fly in sunny San Diego right there at Montgomery Fields. And getting started is super easy. Just call them at 858-569-1822 or just go to learn to fly with SDFTI or call them at 858-569-1822 and we'll see you in the sky. All right, our special guest in the house has got the wonderful ear protection gear review, the infamous Alicia Curtin. No applause? What? No applause? We don't have applause? Where's our board up? Yay. So, Alicia. Yes. Have you used these? I do. I do. Does it help? I believe so. I like them a lot. What What caused you to go to them? So, I I have, I, I, and I don't think I'm unique in this, and that's why I want to kind of talk about it. I have, I, I when it comes to inner ears, sometimes the outer ears are just not what I want, whether you're looking to get a good cheek weld or it's just, sometimes people just have a personal preference or a comfort. They want an inner ear option. My ears don't seem to accommodate, or they, the uh, the standard inner ears just don't seem to accommodate me well. They get uncomfortable. They they push out. They just don't give the protection that I need. And so I kind of went on a hunt to find a good inner ear that worked for me. And I think that I found um, I found one that works really well, well with, that I like to share. And with inner ear, mm-hmm. you can wear a hat. You, well, you, yes. Because with outers, you know, muffins or earmuffs, you can't, I mean, it's pretty hard to wear. It's more difficult. It is. Yeah. Okay. So Correct. tell us, who's the company? So the company is AKT1. And they make both inner and outer ears. I actually do have both, um, both inner and outer ears from them, and I like, I enjoy them both. Okay, uh, hard to fit. No, no, they're not hard to fit at all. You don't have to have them special made. Or- no, they're not custom. They're not custom. They're they're uh, out the box, ready for anybody. And then, and you know, a lot of inner ears do come with you know a small, medium, large insert, usually that you can adjust. And mm. and even then, a lot of those didn't often work for me. Like I said, I got skinny ear canals. <laughs> And they actually have an extra small version. If you reach out to the company, they'll send you. That's even smaller than their standard small. Do they have a device that they can that you can measure your inner ear? That I don't know about. That's a great question. I'm that sure. I'm know. sure they have. You know, like when you order a ring online. Right. You know, they have the ring <laughs> size, so you'll know what size to get. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. So, when you when you wear these, what what mm-hmm. what what advantage do you get out of them for people that don't know what we're talking about? So it's, it's, it's an inner ear. Um, it does have an inner piece that goes into the ear, and it has a moldable loop that goes around the back of the ear just to help give a little bit more grip and hold to hold them in place. But one of the things that, first of all, the comfort, because of the different size options that it gives you, um, I appreciate that. But they also make some electronic options that I found very valuable. They have three different models. They have one that's simply just a straight um, soundproof. They're all, they, all, um, they all protect up to 29 NRR. And um, so all across the board, all their models do that. But their, their lower end model is just going to be Bluetooth only. So you can connect it to your phone. If you get a call, you don't have to try to swap out ears. You can have your hearing protection in and still connect to your phone. If you want to do music, I don't, I don't, but that could yeah. also be an option. They make a mid-range model that does not have Bluetooth connectivity, but has hear-through technology. So if you like the option, like your electronic outer ears, the being able to hear what's going on around you, I personally really like that a lot. And it does give that sound canceling of those higher decibels of the rounds going down range, but it allows you to hear through other things, voices, commotion, things that may be going on around you. I find that very valuable. And then they have the other, the, uh, the upper end model, which is what I have. That's a combination of both. It gives you Bluetooth capability, connectivity to your phone, along with hear through if you want it. And that hear through can be shut on or, or turned on or shut off. And you charge these up? Like you do. They're, yes, USB they're, port? Correct. And it has a, a USB-C if that matters to anybody. It's is that, just, yeah, is that's that, the newer version uh, yeah, of the USB. Yeah, it's another I know. stupid. I know, another I know. thing to buy. Yeah, I got a little teeny hole. I go, what the heck is that? Uh, 
once you charge them up, how long do they last? So it, it depends on the model that you choose. If you're going to go with Bluetooth, either of the two Bluetooth options, it's 10 to 12 hours. If you're going to go with just the hear through technology, you have upwards of 40 hours on one charge. Well, if you're I've, shooting I've that them, long. I've had them about six months. I've charged mine three times and they still have. Well, yeah. Perry be the only one that would need yeah. to charge them up every, <laughs> what, three, four hours? Right. Well, and I, I personally wear in here as well. I, I, I Combination love of both. having an in-ear electronic. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The muffs for me just happen to you know make my ear sore. Um, he's asking you to so. take your headphones off, and if you want to stick them in your ear, <laughs> no, he's asking you to put them on on video. Show show yeah. them on the on the camera. Yeah, Sorry, just put them right <laughs> up right there. Come this so way. People can see. Okay. <laughs> well, you can go ahead and pull your headphones off and just show how easy they were to put it put in. Do we have any music to go behind this? Is your stand or do you want to grab that ear, the upper ear, and then just kind of give an up and out pull? Wrap it around here and give an up and out pull, and that just opens that canal. And they do give both a silicone insert as well as um, as like a memory foam. You decide how, you know, that the memory foam gives you um, more soundproofing. Hmm. And then if you want to mold it, you can. It's just, it's it's um for me, the big difference was just, the comfort. A lot of those inner ear inserts for me, even when the small ones, they just for me didn't work. Yeah. They didn't fit. Just bugged you because you did. could feel. And it would hurt or it would push out to where every few minutes I was having to cram it back in. Ear, <laughs> ear rings optional. <laughs> just yeah. checking. How does it do with, with wind? I it, With wind? It, great question. So when, because sometimes when you have, when you have that hear through technology, sometimes wind does, does kind of interfere with that. Um, it's, you do hear it, but it's not as, obnoxious or overbearing as some of the other options that I've tried from other manufacturers. I think muffs are probably a little bit more susceptible to that. They are, than, than very much so. Well, and I cool. think with muffs, don't you get, don't your ears start sweating? Like if oh, it's yeah. a hot, 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 sunny, sunny yeah. day? Yeah, they get, they get sore. Like my ears get sore. Under yeah. Muffs. Especially if you but got like the, you, you know, when you put the eyes through here sometimes. And even if you right, go bougie right. and you get those gel pad inserts for your outer ears, sometimes it's still just not comfortable yeah, after yeah, a period yeah. of time. Yeah. Plus, if, if, if you have detachable, detached lobes, <laughs> Like my my you, my lobes like stick like it does it on my cans right you here. You need you need ear rings. Enormous ridiculous ear lobes. You should have ear rings. I could go fishing with these. I'm you could. Sure. So if you have detached, lobes, I can't believe this is devolved. You actually right. were told by a doctor you have detached ear lobes. Yeah, that's what they're, that's what they're called. Did Where you? Where they don't connect to my my. They don't uh, connect to your ear. My skull. Really. So they're uh, yeah. So anyway, Not so I have big ear lobes. So. <laughs> <laughs> the muffs, it doesn't fit, and it and it doesn't always. So I can't. It doesn't. I don't get a seal. So do you have inner? I, I well now I'm I'm going to. What kind of, <laughs> all right, so let's start at the bottom. Okay. So the Pinto costs how much? Ninety two. And then the Maverick costs ninety nine. And the Cadillac one thirty nine. What's the difference between the the three? You weren't paying attention. So, I wasn't. So Tell the, me the, one more the, time. Sorry. The lower price point is just going to be straight up inner ear Bluetooth, which for a lot of people that's going to be you know, beyond what they need. Um, and then the, the mid is going to be not Bluetooth, but just hear through. I see. I see. So I see, it's okay. that sound. It gives you that, that, and that then surround. the Cadillac. Correct. And that's going to be a combination of both. It's Bluetooth and hear through as well. And the buttons, what are nice is the buttons are, are, um, they're pretty easy to find. They're pretty, um, in, uh, intuitive as far as what's where. And so what are those, not what's fumbling. that for? What's that so for? So your buttons on here, you've got basically on off and yeah, then put it, uh, oh. put it away. so you've got your on off got your volume up volume or volume down volume up uh, for bluetooth and this is your hear through off and on so i can listen to my phone you can on those and Absolutely. can i take phone calls does Absolutely. It have a mic? yeah when i'm on the range my kids call me i don't have to step out oh man yep. whole, whole game changer perry yeah. <laughs> and look at you have the you also have the convenience of how small the pack should be. Yeah. So you yeah. don't have to carry around your big earmuffs because you, you got you, know, you carry enough, enough gear yeah, to exactly. last a lifetime right right what's got what what kind of uh, do they give you a warranty do you know? I'm sure they do. I'm sure. <laughs> She's good. You know that. When in doubt, tap dance. I'm totally gonna get these. So the the best, the top, the bestest ones or the the toppest ones are one thirty nine. One thirty nine. I'm totally gonna get those because yeah. I'm wearing I'm wearing uh, uh, I'm wearing muffs mm -hmm. in my Jeep, listening to my phone. <laughs> this I've year, seen you do that. Yeah, yeah, I pulled up and we were having lunch not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, so and I'm sitting there. in your Jeep. Yeah, with the rocking. I'm pretty sure this is slightly less illegal, so I think I'm gonna have to. And it these. probably is less goofiness. You know, <laughs> Just where I... out a little bit. No, they'll never know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. 
So what's the manufacturer again? Yeah, where are they? AKT and then the number one. And if you go to their website, I've not found a vendor locally that sells them, although I wouldn't be surprised if there is. I've tried, but I've not found anybody. It's right. online, akt1sport.com. Now, did you get the, them from them today to do this, or did you buy them? I actually bought them on my own. Okay. Bought them on so my own. So we'll chat up. We'll get you off air so you can start getting products sent to you. Absolutely. And Let then me when, reviews. Well, and then when you talk to the people that you test their product, for our listeners, you know, we'll get a GOR discount, 10%, 15%. All they got to do is mention GOR or what have you. And we only do that for our consumers or our listeners because, you know, we try to give back to them as much as we possibly can. Well, that's pretty, so if, that's if pretty cool. if you're not politically opposed to using Amazon, they <laughs> you can buy them right on Amazon. Absolutely. For, yeah, 139 are the, the, uh, the cool guys. And if you're a prime, shipping's free. Yeah. I'm only speaking for the king of the house. It's so this they're saying here 10, 10 hour battery life. Is that is that legit or is that just and what they say? I that's <laughs> that's the version I have. Like I said, yeah. I've I've had them since April. I've charged them three times and I use them quite a bit. I believe that that is probably a very conservative estimate. Really, and I it's in my in my experience this particular pair has been significantly longer. Well, I was gonna say you charged it up what three times and how long? Since April. Okay, yeah. we have a listener. Got a technical question. Uh -oh. This will teach you. Yeah. Says, I wear hearing aids. What? Could I use them and still hear people talk? How about if we get back to him, since he happens to be a you know a listener, and you can look into it, get a hold of the manufacturer, and say, I am a radio co-host, and I Absolutely. just tested your little earpieces, and I have a question for you. Absolutely happy to do it. Yeah. Cool. Homework? You want to write that down? I'm seriously going to buy these. This is awesome. I'm so glad you got uh, I like them. Air, air protection is so difficult. I know. I know. You know, everybody's got it's, the walkers and the Howard Lates, you know. And, yeah. You or know, the and, lights. And the, and the Peltors. Yeah. I even went out and tried a, an Elgin, which is um, which is a, it's more aimed at being like a construction worker. So for, for hearing protection for them. And I've tried those. And those were decently comfortable. They weren't horrible. But these are much better. I find the ones I have after if you're, they, you sweat, your ears mm -hmm. sweat. Is that just me? That's no. a, that's an unpleasant thought, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than having a detached earlobe. I'm going to go home and Google that. I don't think I've ever heard that before. All right, let's take a quick Detachable break. earlobe. God, killing yes, me. All right, All right PRMI Mortgage, primeres.com slash Alpine. Hey, if you're looking to buy or refi, or if you're just considering a reverse mortgage, call our local mortgage guy that you can trust. Call Chris Wiley at PRMI Mortgage. For nearly 25 years, Chris has been helping local San Diegans with all their mortgage needs. They make it easy. You can work with a friendly expert team that will help you get the best deal on a mortgage. I have to tell you, I was looking at a reverse mortgage. Yeah. He looked at my finances. He says, nope, you don't need it. Really? Whatever you're doing is doing just fine. You don't need to do it. You just wanted to check it out, and he... he Said, but nope, he not could a good have, idea. He, said, he, he could have, have sold it to you. Yeah, he could have sold it to you. So, it, I just he, want, he's a good guy. I just want to throw that out there. Plus, he's a Second Amendment guy. Lives in Alpine, 619-722-1303. Or just go to primeres.com slash Alpine. Chris Wiley's been around from the very beginning. 25 he's really, years he's really, lived in San Diego. Yeah, but I mean, he's with been with San Diego County Gunners yeah. from the beginning. He's been a really great guy. Okay, the topic is blank. So, well, the topic is blank. So, uh, Perry Yee, we... Uh, interviewed him. He's been on the show here uh, t talking about uh, fortified measures. And when I was, uh, when we were interviewing him, I, I was saying how I, at one point when you and I were, I don't know, having lunch or something like that, I asked you, okay, what's, what's, what's like the scariest thing that happened mm -hmm. to you while you were a SEAL? You know, and I thought it was an interesting story. It's probably, it wasn't what Did it scare most you? people would think. It, I would be terrified, yeah, but it's not what most people would think. You know, it's not you know, some big movie scene. I thought it was kind of interesting in that it was a unique uh, story. But anyway, go ahead. Tell he the story. He went to so lunch with Alec Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. Terrifying. So, yeah, this happened. Uh, I was actually, I wasn't even in the SEAL teams yet. It was, I think, my last week of training. We were in SQT, which is SEAL qualification training, uh, which a lot of people don't know is, you know, there's BUDS, which is the first half, and then there's actually another six, seven months of training after BUDS before you graduate get your trident and then go to a seal team and what do you so what do you do you jump out of planes and learn how to die yeah it's it's the more in-depth training you know um at, at, towards the end the within buds you do very you know the basic um 
especially like you know firearms you're learning your, your, your basic pistol and rifle and very basic ctb but you know with sqt that's then that's where they're training you to be more well equipped and prepared for going to the teams wow and so this was our last week of training and we were doing a a big dive out in in the bay mm-hmm. and so san diego um, bay san diego bay and so you know how that works is you you dive with a buddy so it's a you swim as a pair you're connected with the six foot buddy line and um you know one person is the driver that's actually you know doing all the navigating and then the other person is kind of the the, the buddy you're there just for the ride until you get to your destination and then for you know whatever operation you're doing and this is scuba or are you rebreathers? so we were doing the rebreathers so we're in the, the drager systems and so um what had happened was we were dropped off which would before we, so the yep. re- rebreathers tell them what a rebreather is so basically with the rebreather you have um an O2 bottle so you're, you don't have the um the big oxygen tanks on your back it sits on your chest and you get about four hours of air with the it's a small tank mm-hmm. and so when you breathe in it recycles the air and so there's no bubbles that can come out and go to the surface yeah. so you, you know, only go down you, like 30 feet or something. i think 20 yeah 20, 20 feet, feet okay. is, is the max and so you know you're, you're not really deep but so we got dropped off in the bay over by um you know one of the marinas over by harbor harbor drive and um so we were swimming through the bay and uh we we came through the uh the little marina section there under the coronado bridge where all the 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 boats are docked off and so what we were doing is we would swim to the coronado bridge and the 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 driver of the pair which was me at the time we had to come up to the surface one of our instructors was sitting there in a kayak and he was going to give you directions on you know where where you were going after that so we stopped under the bridge we actually we were the first swim repair to make it we just had a direct line to where we were supposed to be and uh as i was giving him the signal for me to ascend to let him know i was going to go up to the surface um i i put my hand i was i was under the water on one of the you know one of the the stanchions of the bridge and so I, I had my hand on it and i was like all right i'm just going to follow this up and then give myself a peek see if we're under you know the right spot or if we had to you know move left or right to find our instructor so as i'm ascending i have my hand on the wall and it starts getting darker and i'm like this doesn't make sense you know it's nighttime but you see the the lights on the bridge so you know you know exactly where you are so it starts getting darker and i'm like this doesn't make any sense at all i'm getting you know higher in the water should be getting brighter and then all of a sudden it's pitch black and then i'm stuck (laughs) and so apparently the insides of of those pillars on the bridge are hollow and now I'm literally wedged up in there. And so, you know, I, I was very claustrophobic growing up. And so now all that started to start oh, kick in. Oh, no. And so now I'm at the point where, like, well, I don't even really know what to do. So I, I don't want to tug on my buddy line and have my, you know, my, my buddy come up with me and get stuck, too. Um, but any you know, tugging, I'm, he's going to come up. Right. So, I, I, you know, I figured, all right, I got to try to solve something. And I'm, I'm pushing up on the inside of the, of the wall and I'm just, I'm, I'm completely stuck. And so luckily I had enough room to where I could reach down our, our dive knives are on the inside of our ankles. And so I reached up and or reached down, grabbed my dive knife and I had to sit there and chisel away at the rock wall until I could break free and come back down. What but was it, causing it, you to be stuck? So You're, it just, the, the quarters the were so tight. It's not even that they were so tight as I got higher up, my chest array got stuck and so literally I'm, I'm sitting there arms and legs flapping around and i'm not going anywhere and you and so can't there was nothing there's above. nothing above me so i was just in this like <laughs> i don't know just in this this hollow little thing and so but, but luckily i was able to, to reach down and get my dive knife but i had to sit there and chisel away until i could break myself free and how much did you have down. to chisel away a few minutes which <laughs> yeah. in my head lasted a long time you know and what was your like dive was, buddy thinking where'd you go no yeah he was just did sitting you, down did there did you talk to him after, well, him like, after yeah what did he say was uh, he like oh, I but, I mean, he had, yeah he had no idea he figured i was up there i wonder where you went getting instruction um oh, wow. but yeah it was and he was staying down because that's probably what he was supposed to do yeah he's just sitting there and how pissed would you have been if you went if you you know you that's that's how you 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 know you, you bought the farm. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. like, like all that, and that's what you know. I might how still be up there. <laughs> yeah, but how pissed would you be if the city charged you for damaging the? That's true. <laughs> yeah, oh, maybe you said that. Maybe you should have said that. <laughs> yeah. So how much? That's why that bridge collapsed. Yeah, really. 
I, I, which, by the way, interesting story, right? Oh, you I know? would be petrified. I would be terrified. Yeah, I'm not. I don't about you, I mean, Alicia? Either way, your your no dives. Problem. It, the 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 night dives that you do are there. There's oh, they're always so scary because you're underwater for four hours at a time, and it's it's pitch black. You can't see anything. And so you're in San Diego Bay doing this. Yeah. So how much? I mean, at any given time, are there just seals paddling around San Diego Bay? Is that Maybe. fairly common? Maybe. Right. How do you keep her getting <laughs> run over by a boat? No, so they'll they'll be um, each each swimmer pair also has like it's funny it's it's a little one of those retractable dog leashes that has a buoy oh, on with the, the surface light on it. and so yeah uh, and then there's like some chem lights stuck in there so and you'll you'll hear um, the boats driving up above you and sometimes they get close and uh, if you hear like the the instructors will throw some stuff in the water that lets you know you gotta suck mud and you literally have to dive down and shove your hands inside. The, the the mud and hold yourself yeah. down while there's stuff. Well, I don't even like some of those you. big ships. I mean, you can only go twenty feet down. Some of those big ships, are, they'll they, suck you right up. Well, they yeah. draft more than twenty feet. I'm I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm I'm sure there's. Yeah, you know, but you're scheduling up. But you're up. <laughs> <laughs> but you're up that. close to the pier. You know, they're not going to get that. I mean, they're going to be going between them. No. Well, we. I mean, we we would we would swim along. You know, the center of the bay, which also. I mean, I don't think it gets any deeper than like. 40 feet or so oh, i don't know i'd imagine yeah. yeah i don't think it's all that it doesn't yeah it doesn't have to be that yeah deep, but. that's amazing either way that was one right. of the most terrifying moments i had I have, a, I have another one that would have scared you too because i was when i was a kid i was in the explorer scouts and the underwater demolition team was teaching us to scuba and they were using where you have the generator and the hookah you know with yep. those yep so the qdt dies down there with a couple of the kids and one of the instructor one of my buddies says <laughs> Go turn that generator off for God's sakes. Okay. Ooh. You never seen a underwater guy come out of the water so fast. Because uh, I didn't know. I shut the thing off. And <laughs> yeah. He came out real quick. He needed that. I know. I, I had to tell him that story. Yeah. Wow, that was it is interesting. I, so Alicia, what was the most <laughs> it's like the one time when pecs don't come in handy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just right. In those tight spaces. Well, you got shot. <laughs> I used the ammunition shot, yes. I mean, how did that happen? I was doing a CQB course, and it uh, wasn't my home, though. You know, it was uh, it was someone else's someone else's domain and uh, an attorney facility, and um, it was it was it was a great it was and he and and Perry's correct. The adrenaline that you get from knowing that something's going to be coming back at you just heightens you to a different level that you just can't duplicate or talk someone through until they experience it. Well, one of the best things you can do with training is you videotape because oh, in, yeah, in your head you think you might be all stealthy, mm -hmm. you look all badass. And then you show them what they look like, and you know, they're running around and their guns above ah, their head, and it, it's crazy. Like how again, like how different. So you videotape your training. Yeah, yeah, at yeah people's you got to videotape everything, because also when you're getting trying to get a point across, and it, it's one thing you can verbally explain right. it to them, but you know for them to visually, yeah, you see, can't waddle. See I'm not waddling. <laughs> Trust me, you're waddling. Yeah. Wow. And you never. It, it's always. I've had people take video of me while I happen to be training sucks yeah <laughs> it's like oh man because I, I thought i looked way cooler hey you know? why do you think i don't watch any of my ksi segments <laughs> i watch none because if i do it's like oh my god look at that old fart i know it's kind of a yeah, bummer it's really a bummer it, it is, is a bummer. <laughs> wow but any, that's so that's do you still dive or did, did that develop a, a a love or a hatred of uh going underwater no i i honestly i i don't really if you don't do have to much. go down yeah. i'm not going down <laughs> would you, you would never want to dive you did not just not your thing uh, not? yeah i mean I, I didn't have a huge love for it to begin with so uh i mean i also my only experiences are in san diego where you know, san the diego water Bay. is disgusting you know if you're bring me somewhere tropical where i can actually see what's going on yeah I'm sure it is the story. thing i mean the only when i first got to san diego I, I i did a lot of diving when i was in hawaii and i was in high school i was young and i did uh you know, and then I moved to San Francisco, and there's like nothing. You don't want to get in any water up there. And then down in San Diego, I'm like, all right, what kind of diving do you guys have? And they were talked a lot about the kelp forests. And I'm like, well, what is that? And they explained it to me. I'm like, I would feel like I was just an item on a shark buffet. Yes. Yeah. That's Without what that would feel like to me, you know? So, yeah, that's the lettuce, yeah. and you're the little shrimp. There's a lot of brave, uh, a lot more brave people out there yeah. that are making fun of me right now, as they say. So, that. you wouldn't go shark diving? I probably would, but I don't know. No, I would like would. to get back into it. I, I kind of started missing diving recently. Uh, Desi from Not Me just got certified, or she's getting certified. As, as, a, a, as a diver? As a diver, yeah. So that's, that, that even got me a little bit more, uh, you know, 
more fired up. All right. Well, so well, well the technology's come a real, 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 real long way. So when I was going through, I was like 12 and I was going through a class and there was an old guy in there and he was talking about, you know, kind of back in my day, we didn't have all this fancy. That's whatever, right. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to end up being that guy. Yeah. When I go get oh, yeah, certified. We started out with two hoses. Yeah. And they introduced a single hose regulator. Oh, wow. Well, like this guy was, he was like tables. What are tables? We just went down until our air yeah, ran out. No, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you never had the bends. That's whole new world. You, whole new world. I don't dive anymore either. Almost got hit by a boat. He thought the red and white flag was a target. <laughs> yeah, as I was coming up. So, hey, yeah. folks. Attention, California residents. Gun laws are changing across the country. The recent SCOTUS ruling affirms your right to carry a concealed firearm. So now, more than ever, it's critical you know your California gun laws. That's why the U.S. Concealed Carry Association exists, to help keep responsible Americans up to date with education and training. Visit uscca.com slash G-O-R to learn more about California gun laws and getting your concealed carry permit. That's uscca.com slash G-O-R for the most up-to-date California gun laws. Act now. All right, everybody's favorite segment, Stump My Nephew. We actually have, uh, it's uh, it's kind of an important day. Well, I guess it's, it's the day after an important day when it comes to Stump My Nephew. Yesterday was Sam's 23rd birthday. Hey, happy birthday, son. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's what I thought, but I wasn't <laughs> going to say anything. Tomorrow is Sam's 23rd birthday. Happy birthday tomorrow. Thank are, you. Are you sure? I, I don't nope. even... You're asking him about his own birthday. <laughs> I think we it. stumped him. And by the way, Sam, mine was Wednesday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Well, I, I knew you, that's why I liked you more than your uncle. <laughs> Maybe his. No. Tomorrow is his birthday Just, if you're using metric. Don't even go there. <laughs> the question is bad enough. It's kind of a bad question. Hey, real quick, though. What are you doing? Anything special for your birthday? You going to the range? Getting a new gun? It's working. Anything cool? Nope, I've, I've got some errands to take care of in the morning, and then uh, that's uh, I'm going to have a nice dinner with my family in, in the evening, and that's about it. That sounds awesome. Are you guys closed on Mondays? The store? Yeah. Uh, no, we're open seven days a week, but I'm not working tomorrow. Very good. Most people don't take their days off, especially Leo's. Well, happy birthday. Very, yeah, happy cool. birthday. Got to it. be fair, I'm not scheduled on Mondays. Anyway. Ah, there he tells the truth. I love a truth. Well, he still finished. You know, he still finished up college. So he just works on the gun sh- at the gun shop. What? Just we- weekends usually. Yeah, usually weekends. Um, uh, fill in days when needed, but yeah, usually just weekends. You got to go for a flight. There you go. He's a pilot too. I know. I would. Well, we'll come pick we- us up. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here we go. So, uh, stump my nephew. If you send in a question and we use it, you get a hat or a shirt. If you stump my nephew, which is very rare, although today's kind of weirdness might uh, might end up uh, stumping him. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I, I have a backup. I have two. You're going to get two questions today, Sam. Um, if you stump him, we'll give you something special. I don't know what it is, but we'll, we'll we will figure it out and give you something super super special. So this week's question is Perry. You want to you want to ask it? the question? See where it is. So who who it's from? Normally, that'd be Action Jackson, but I think you can handle it. You're feeling All right. The question comes from Merv from New Jersey. And the question is, what kind of guns are banned at the Republican and Democratic National Conventions? Merv from New Jersey, thanks very much for writing in. Um, As far as I am aware, because of the presence of um, certain political elected officials who have um, Secret Service and other security. Again, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, all firearms are banned at, the, uh, at both major parties' national conventions. Um, the attendees, even if they have concealed handgun permits, are not allowed to carry. So we don't vet this, but Merv, <laughs> so we don't know if Merv's right or wrong, but Merv says that water guns are banned. Water guns are banned, but actual guns are allowed at the Democratic and Republican National Conventions. We might need to. I that. think Merv I we're throwing is this whole wrong. thing out. I, we're, you know, Merv. No, it <laughs> makes perfectly good sense that no. I mean, 
Yeah, because there's gu- armed guards everywhere. Right? We're moving on to a different question. All right, what's your next? Here's one? the next question. Here's the here's the, uh, the real the trivia question for you. This was sent in from Michael out of Imperial Beach. Michael out of Imperial Beach wants to know what caliber is a bullet whose diameter is ten point one six millimeters. What caliber is a bullet? whose diameter is 10.16 millimeters. Michael from Imperial Beach, thanks for writing in. Um, We notate the calibers of the ammunition and the firearms we use in two different systems of measure. Well, really three if you count shotguns, but metric and imperial. And this gets into the, the issue with nominal versus actual caliber because there are three different ways for actually measuring that physical size. But generally, 10 millimeters and, and as you say, 10.16 millimeters uh, works out to be equivalent to 40 caliber. So you'll see in countries that use the metric system, you'll see 40 Smith & Wesson ammunition marked as 10 by 22 and 10 millimeter auto marked as 10 by 25 or 10 millimeter Norma automatic. That's exactly right. 10.16 is 40 caliber. 40 caliber Smith & Wesson is 10.16 or 40 caliber, and the case length is 21.59. And then uh, 10 millimeter auto is 10.16, or 40 caliber, and its case length is 25.20. Exactly right. Congratulations. Yeah, nice job. That was a little, see, that was a little better. Yeah. That was a little better. That was kind of a weak <laughs> ding in the... Poor Merv. We're, we're like beating up on Merv from New Jersey. <laughs> Sorry, no, Merv. Your I'm question talking was about just fine. This. What? That my sound effects. I thought it was a good ding. Oh. No, it was not. Oh. Come on, give him a good one. Okay. Uh, bing, bing. Like that. <laughs> Thank God he's in the box. <laughs> Who is that? That's, hey, he's been in there all day. He's been with me all day. I'm going day. crazy in here. I don't have enough fresh air. I crazy. know. Maybe we should l- let him have like some windows and lights. No. Maybe, maybe shove a pizza under the door. No. no. Sam, that's awesome. Have you ever shot a 10 millimeter? I have not shot a 10 millimeter. I really would like to. Um, they're cool guns. It's a really cool round. It's had a great resurgence as of late. And uh, after all, the round itself was designed by none other than Jeff Cooper. So it's, uh, it's, it's got the backing of a legendary figure there. I would like to shoot one soon. Alicia, you're, you're nodding your head. Have you shot a 10 millimeter? I have. I put a few rounds through, but it's been a while and I'd like to do it some more. Yeah. Do you remember, you remember, have any, uh, you remember anything about it? Kick? You know, Anything? it was very comparable in my from to my relationship to the forty. It yeah. was pretty comparable. It's it is more than a nine, but it's not unmanageable. It's it's a it's a good it's a good round. Was it in? Would you, would you remember? Was it a nineteen eleven or a Glock? It was or, Glock. It was Glock. A lot of people, uh, a lot of outdoorsy folks, um, you know, when they talk about like you know what what gun to carry in Alaska, a lot of people are taking uh, ten millimeter Glocks um, because I think that a ten millimeter is power, powerful enough to, you know, uh, handle a moose. Um, but, uh, you know, Glock's pretty reliable and, you know, blah, 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 all those things that everybody says about Glock all the time. Timex so. of guns, yeah. The Timex of guns, right. Your next gun going to be, oh, it's a Timex of guns. <laughs> it takes you a licking and keeps on. Ticking. Yeah, exactly. Clicking. Yeah. Clicking, yeah. clicking, clicking, I think. Clicking. Is that the way you want to go with it? Ooh, have you cool. shot a 10 millimeter? No, I don't think I have, actually. I don't think I have either. It's kind of kind of weird. Now that oh, no, you have to buy one. I don't think any of us have shot a 10 millimeter. It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. Well, except Alicia. Oh. Right. Well, we're in California, so. Say There's what? not a lot of 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter options. There's in California. not. Uh, where'd you shoot it? A friend of mine bought one. <laughs> He's law enforcement, and he was able to get one. Oh, it was in California? Yeah. So we don't have to arrest you? No. Okay, good. So why did Jeff Cooper develop a 10 millimeter? Do you know? Sam? Yeah, Jeff Cooper was a huge fan of the 1911 platform and of the 45 ACP. I mean, who isn't? But um, he wanted something that could drive a heavy bullet a little bit faster sort of along the same lines uh, of thought as 357 Magnum, but in an auto loader and still with, with that large caliber punch. So he spec'd out a cartridge uh, that was to be based on, I believe, the 30 Remington, just cut way down. And um, it was supposed to achieve 1,200 feet per second velocity with a 200 grain bullet out of a 5-inch barrel. He worked with Dornhaus and Dixon to develop the... Uh, the Bren 10, which looks kind of like a CZ-75. They used it in Miami Vice. Um, and that was the first production 10-millimeter pistol. 
Um, it made the round kind of modestly famous because of its use in, in the television show. And Glock and Smith & Wesson followed on soon after with the Glock 20 and the Smith & Wesson, I want to say 1076 and 1026. Um, they, it didn't really see a lot of adoption for law enforcement use because the FBI uh, found it to be too powerful, too heavy recoiling. Um, and I think the only, or one of the only departments that ever adopted 10 millimeter pistols, um, other than the FBI for just like one or two years, was the Virginia State Police. 23 years old, dropping a Miami Vice reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you ever seen Miami Vice? <laughs> that show is 23 years old when he was born. Does he have a white pants? Sure. Seen Miami Vice, and I wouldn't know what it is other than that it has some some pretty big firearm star power in there. Though the one they used in the show, I've heard, was actually a forty-five because there weren't ten mil blanks. Uh, Why does he know that? I, I always liked that shotgun that Tubbs used. It had like a little. Uh, oh yeah. Had like a little. It had like a ring on it, like the the uh, to rack it. You like pulled this ring. Right. I don't know what it was. I have to go back and look now. Anyway, so, Sam, was that awesome like job. the rifleman? It had that big ring on his Winchester? No, yeah, no, no kind of, but not really. Awesome job, Sam. Absolutely. Happy birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, son. Thanks very much, and as always, thanks for having me on. Keep ah. the questions coming, everyone. Talk to you next week. Look forward to it. See you later. Good All night. Right. See? What, can you believe that? Can you believe That's that, crazy. kid? And he's been doing this for what? How many years? Yeah, I mean, he just busted all that out with an impromptu question. <laughs> it, it, it was it was as if he's sitting there reading the article to you. And he doesn't get. We don't send in the questions. We nothing. I, I mean, and like I said, even when he gets stumped, he makes you think he got it right. The kid is just a. And well, he, he was super confident with his the oh, first answer. Oh, yeah, I know, and I kind of believed it. I can't imagine. The Democrats. And we're the, all questioning the answer. On the yeah, paper, we're all questioning. Right? Yeah, right. Exactly. That's amazing. Well, hey, man, it's fun having you in. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate I'm sure it. we'll have you in again. You got to sign up the kid and go to his little RV and teach him how to shoot in all the corners <laughs> and, and in the bathroom. And in the, it's 20 feet long, by the way. Yeah, so yeah. this will this will be good. Alicia, it's fun having you in. Thank you. You coming next week? You'll have me. Yes. How much we gonna How much you gonna have to pay us? Uh, free parking. Free parking. Ooh, she's nice. She's like, I got that figured out. That. All right, don't touch that dial. Guess what? Bob Siegel is in the house, and I put all my paperwork away. Let's go to all of our sponsors. You know who they are. You've been listening. Bob Siegel, old BS. Oh, <laughs> we got it. We got it. We got to market that. Like, I didn't say that. Oh wait, I do have my paperwork. I didn't. The only away. BS that you you want to listen to, Bob Siegel. Yeah, Bob Siegel. Where is it? Uh, he's got a great show, man. I know. I can't find it. On the back. Outro. San Diego County Gun Owners Orange and Inland Empire. Dylan Law Group, PRMI Mortgage, State Street Digital, Seal One, Leo Hamill, San Diego Flight Training, our newest partner. This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. KCBQ, San Diego, K241CT, Oceanside, FM 96.1, North County, and AM 